Yeah, it's a great day uh, to be an LSU Tiger and, and be a part of this program. Uh, quick update on our fall. We have about 11 days left of team practice. Uh, it's been progressing very well. A couple of the highlights over the next couple of weeks is uh, Sunday we play Louisiana Lafayette here, 16 innings, uh, which will be great. Really appreciate the fans uh, coming out last Sunday. Uh, it was pretty impressive for a fall game turnout. And then next weekend we'll have our Fall World Series where we'll split the team up. Uh, players will coach themselves, uh, compete really hard, and uh, make it a wrap for uh, about a month and a half. So uh, that's been going good and uh, looking to finish strong there. You know, relative to, to why we're here and the recruiting class, this is a significant day for our program. I think uh, a couple things that stand out is uh, work. You know, from the second we got here, I mean, literally from in 15 minutes from being announced here, this started to take shape for us. And uh, there's a lot of people that invested a lot of time in it to make it happen. First off, um, and mainly our two assistant coaches, you know, Dan Fitzgerald and Jason Kelly. Um, first off, and, and why I chose them and, and hired them is I wasn't willing to compromise on the recruiting side, which is evident in this class, and certainly wasn't uh, willing to compromise on the development side. And I think if you pulled our current players and the, and the impact that, that both Coach Fitzgerald and Coach Kelly have on our team. It's, it's significant. And then the rest of the staff, we've had to get a lot of players on campus. Uh, I don't think it should be lost that, uh, you know, the last year and a half basically with COVID, you know, nobody was able to come on an official or an unofficial visit. So we had to hit the ground running, get people here. And uh, Tyler Nordgren, our director of operations, superstar relative to lining all these things up. Uh, Mark Wanaka, uh, our hitting coach, uh, Jamie Tetko, Perry Roth, our entire staff, you know, really contributing uh, to making this this awesome. One more person I wanted to thank, uh, Miriam Seeger in our athletic department. I've spent a lot of time in her office uh, since being hired here and, and learning, you know, financial aid, scholarships, things relative to LSU, and, and she made a big impact on that. Um, I think a, a couple things relative to this uh, that we tried to do. Uh, we tried to really look at what players could significantly impact winning at the top of the SEC or at the top of, of college baseball. Uh, we first had to sort through a number of verbal commits relative to uh, you know the previous coaching staff had, and there were several good ones that are a part of this, but, but who really fit you know, relative to what was on the team and the roster right now and then maybe what didn't fit, and then use our opportunities with our resources, our contacts, to you know bring in uh, the bulk and the majority of the group. And I think both of those things played a key part in how this group came together. So um, you know, really from the second being hired, most of it was centered around relationship uh, building. You know, with you know guys that were verbally committed. Uh, and then guys that we wanted to get moved in this direction. And I think we were successful in both of that. And then, you know, obviously in, in coming over here, it opened up a whole another door of, of players that wanted to come here, which was, was really exciting too. So um, looking at it, I think it's really balanced group, uh, very heavy and hard on the pitching side of it. You know, I always use the analogy that pitching staff is like the offensive line in football, where if that – group or unit is not right, it's really, really hard to win at a high level. And then some really highly skilled uh, position players um, that, that really have the ability to impact the game both on offense and defense and, and real complete players. So uh, very, very excited about the whole group. I wanted to briefly talk about, about all of them just for a second. I think they're all worthy of that. And then um, happy to answer any, any questions that you guys have. Uh, going alphabetical order, Nate Ockenhausen, uh, Eastern Oklahoma State College. I think uh, his contribution can be summed up in his statistics from last year. In 28 innings out of the bullpen, he struck out 56 guys. And it's one of those guys where you look as a left-hander with a breaking ball. That's something that always can be used no matter what you have on your roster. He's highly competitive. Uh, motor runs really hot, and I think he's going to make a massive impact on next year's team. And you'll see it with the other group of, of left-handed pitchers that we brought in. That was a big priority in terms of, of what we were doing to 
match up and make things more difficult on our opponents. Uh, so really excited about Nate. Caleb Appleby uh, from Wabash Valley Community College, big physical right-handed uh, pitcher, uh, was a highly recruited tight end actually uh, out of high school. <laughs> We're very glad he chose baseball um, at this at this point in time. But you know, six foot eight, six foot nine, um, really live fastball up to 97 miles an hour, hard breaker. Um, you know, it's not not a guy I'm going to get caught standing next to on camera too often. That wouldn't work out too too well for me. Um, really excited about Caleb. Nick Bronzini, left-handed pitcher from California High School in San Ramon. Uh, once he decided uh, he was going to open up his recruitment, he was a very high priority for us. You're looking at really high-level pitchability uh, with three pitches for strikes. You know, when I, I kind of shut my eyes and, and look at the next couple years, I can really see Nick being a significant impact and a lot of LSU wins, you know, relative as a starter out of the bullpen, uh, high, high level performer. I think he struck out seven of the nine hitters he faced in the area code games, which is, you know, the, the top talent in the country. So really happy uh, Nick decided to come this way. Uh, Micah Bucknam uh, from Canada, uh, somebody we picked up, you know, just recently. Uh, last year was drafted in the MLB draft, 16th round. Uh, by the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, decided to take an extra year of school, uh, which is relatively common in Canada, and, and opened his recruitment up. And we're excited to uh, get Micah this way. A really good curveball uh, pitch for the uh, Canadian national team this year, and, and I think has a lot to, lot to offer our pitching staff. Uh, Justin Crawford, center fielder, uh, Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas. Uh, has a time of 6.11 on the 60-yard dash. If you don't know what that means, that is, there's fast, and then there's Justin Crawford fast. I mean, it is an elite runner. He's one of those guys, when he hits the ball on the ground, there's immediate anxiety for the defense. And so really excited with his skills, his tool set. I mean, that's just that's game-changing speed that you don't see uh, hardly anywhere in, in baseball, and obviously does a terrific job in the outfield and, and something that's, that's really key about Justin is he's a terrific person as well. He's one of those guys that you love being around and makes everybody else around him better. Uh, Gavin Guidry, uh, the best player in the state of Louisiana, in my opinion, uh, two-way player, uh, played for the 18 and under Team USA national team, which in my opinion of all these teams, of all these things, is the, by far the hardest one to make. It's uh, USA Baseball picks the, the 20 guys that they think are the top guys relative for what they're trying to do. And, and Gavin made that team as a two-way player. Uh, it is safe to say you'll see him on the field, in the infield, and on the mound at LSU. I mean, is, when you talk about a two-way player, this is a two-way player. He plays for Coach Caccini at Barb High School, um, you know, helped them win a state championship last year. We'll probably do the same thing this year. Uh, the key moments of the game, it's, it's somebody you probably won on the mound. He has a terrific curveball. And then as an infielder, I mean, just is as twitchy and as explosive and as athletic as you want that type of middle, field, middle of the field player to be. And it has a great competitiveness about him that is exactly what I want our players at LSU to, to have and to represent. So super excited about Gavin. That was a, a big priority. You know, he had, had committed to the previous staff. I think I had my introductory uh, press conference on a Monday, and, and we made sure Gavin was here on Tuesday to make sure that that relationship started to started to build. Uh, moving over into Texas, Griffin Herring, left-handed pitcher from South Lake Carroll High School in Texas, uh, had video game type numbers in his, his high school season last year. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of contact uh, being made or runs being scored on Griffin. Uh, really good athlete, uh, very intelligent. A uh, high academic guy, highly motivated. Um, you know, he's, he's sent me some video recently of some of the things he's been doing relative to improvement. And uh, is one of those guys that has a lot of things that you can put into a college baseball game right now and, and help us be successful from the mound. So we're really, really excited about Griffin. Jared Jones, catcher from Walton High School in Marietta, Georgia. I mean, this dude looks like a major leaguer standing in the box. I mean, he takes up almost the entire <laughs> box and uh, has an unbelievable feel for hitting. You know, kind of when I think of him, he's that guy that, you know, the opposing pitcher, the opposing pitching coach, they kind of probably all always know how many hitters he is away uh, because of his ability to hit, impact the ball, hit with power, 
and has a ter terrific throwing arm, you know, from behind the plate. And it's really important um, that your catcher has some leadership qualities, some maturity, and uh, Jared certainly has those things. So we're, we're definitely excited about him. Michael Kennedy, uh, left-handed pitcher from Troy High School in New York, uh, was also a member of the 18U Team USA national team. Uh, this guy has, you know, potential weekend starter written all over him. Um, very passionate and very excited to be coming to LSU. Uh, of all the guys that I met initially when I took the job, um, his his passion, his uh, commitment seemed the strongest, you know, to, to LSU. And that's something that we're really, really thankful for. Again, as I mentioned with Griffin Herring, Michael is a tireless worker. He's spending a lot of time right now doing the things he's going to need to do to to be a top of uh, top of the rotation type pitcher here and do it for, you know, hopefully three years. So very excited about Michael. Paxton Kling uh, from Central High School in Roaring Springs, Pennsylvania, I uh, believe is probably our, our highest rated recruit in terms of, of national rankings. Uh, very, very talented player relative to speed, power, hitting skills, ability to go get the ball in the outfield. Again, was also on the 18U national team. And um, really, I believe that his potential is limitless. And it's, it's one of those guys that I'm excited to, to work with. I'm excited for Coach Wanaka to continue to get to work with him as well um, and see what that turns out you know, in you know, two or three years' time. Uh, from here. So very excited about Paxton. Jacob Mizorowski from Crowder Community College, uh, probably our most recent commit. Um, you know, he has what I would call a fastball that when you see it and hear it, the hair stands up on your neck. I mean, it's intimidating looking at it through a video on your phone uh, with a, a wipeout slider as well. This is a guy that someday I see pitching in the major leagues and you don't have to dream on it. Uh, very far for that. Uh, we recruited him extremely hard. I think it was about 10 days ago. He finally told me he was coming here and um, very, very good phone call right there. Very excited about uh, Jacob and, and what his future will be here, you know, next year in 2023. Aiden Moffitt from Taylorsville High School in Mississippi along the lines of Jacob, big, strong, physical. We didn't recruit a ton of pitchers that look like me, like I said. Um, great fastball. Great command of his off-speed pitches, swing and miss, strikeout type stuff, and um, you know a pitcher that we really feel like is going to contribute for his entire time here. Terrific student as well, really excels in the classroom, and uh, one that you're going to see in a lot of box scores over the next three years. Uh, Brady Neal, left-handed hitting catcher uh, from IMG Academy uh, in Florida. Uh, this guy is as complete a player as we probably have in the class. He actually reclassified uh, up from the 2023 class to the 2022 class and um, has had no problem, you know, making that uh, transition. Um, he had a couple hits in the, in the perfect game uh, All-American Classic at Petco Park, and one of them was off one of our players. And uh, I told that pitcher, don't worry about it. That's going to be your catcher here at LSU, so you won't have to face him. Uh, but terrific, terrific skill set. Um, Great worker, uh, much like Jared, as I mentioned, you know, he has the ability to um, handle a pitching staff of this caliber of the guys that we'll have returning of the guys on this list and is a really good offensive player. And that's what excites me about both of those guys. Their bat can carry themselves, you know, into the lineup, you know, and both of them are elite hitters. So that's uh, exciting, but really, really fired up uh, about Brady. Jaden Newt, a right-handed pitcher from Sierra Canyon High School in California. Again, another one of our more recent commits. Uh, electric fastball up to 95, 96 miles an hour. Really good curveball. Uh, highly motivated. Uh, really believes in himself. Pitches with a lot of confidence uh, that I think is going to be necessary to make an early contribution you know, in the top of the SEC and at a place like LSU. And um, again, uh, the talent, as I speak of these guys, it really stands out to you. But I think the competitiveness, the confidence is, is something that you'll see, which separates them and, and makes them the, the players that they are. Mick Paul is an outfielder from Olympus High School in Utah, uh, elite runner, elite. Uh, I think he's like a 6'4", 6'5", 60 runner, uh, terrific defensive center fielder, one of the best that, that I've seen um, in a long time in recruiting circles, uh, tremendous athlete, 
again, another left-handed hitter that can handle the bat and do a lot of things really, really well, and another uh, elite caliber makeup person that's going to make everybody around him better. Mikey Romero, uh, shortstop uh, from Orange Lutheran High School in California, probably the, the player on this list that, that I've known um, the longest. I believe he had committed to us um, when he was in eighth grade. So, I mean, to get to signing day is a, uh, a pretty, significant, pretty significant day in that relationship. By no surprise, he's turned into one of the best players in the country, left-hand hitting shortstop, uh, handles the ball at that position about as well as you can, and has really turned into, in my opinion, one of the best left-handed hitters in, in the country. And just a quick story about him. I remember, I mean, he was on a visit in eighth grade. And well, that was still, you could still do that because it was several years ago. And uh, I was kind of nervous about like, am I remember really gonna verbally commit a, a junior high kid? And so we're starting to talk about it. And I was like, man, you gotta continue to get better. And his dad, Mike, who's one of the best people that I know, um, just said, coach, I will make sure that this happens. And I looked over here and his sister, um, Sierra, is one of the best softball players in the world. Um, was the national player of the year at the University of Michigan. And then um, Sydney, his other sister, was a two-time national champion at the University of Oklahoma. And, um, you know, he, his dad said he might be the, the third best shortstop in our family, but I'll make sure he's good enough to, to be the shortstop for you. But their family is, is superstar all the way through and really excited to have, uh, have Mikey here at LSU. Zeb Ruddle uh, from Neville High School. Um, here in Louisiana, uh, love left-handed hitters, I love athletic players, and, and Zeb certainly fits that. Uh, as we got a chance to evaluate him throughout the, the back end of the summer and the fall, thought he really made some significant steps forward. And if you look at um, our style of play or our team, and then you watch Zeb play, he's a guy that easily fits into that. Um, I, you know, I mentioned, I think Gavin's the top player in, in the state. I think Zeb is the next best player in the state, and both of them are different and, and are certainly going to contribute a lot here at LSU. Chase Shores, uh, right-handed pitcher uh, from Midland Lee High School in Midland, Texas. Again, uh, six foot eight, six foot nine. Um, going to have to keep Coach Wade away from some of these pitchers, you know, and, and make sure that uh, he's not trying to take them over to the, the basketball, basketball floor. But um, one of the best high school pitchers in the country. Um, electric fastball, downhill, swing and miss breaker, elite competitor, uh, super teammate um, as well. Like there's nothing, there's no boxes that he doesn't check. There's not a box he doesn't check, excuse me, relative to talent, relative to competitiveness, relative to character, relative to impact that he's going to have at LSU. So. Uh, again, an, a recent commit and, and a very big one, you know, for, for us. I mean, it's one of the top high school pitchers in the country. Adrian Saravo from Weatherford Community College in Texas, uh, originally from Connecticut, uh, was a Cape Cod League All-Star this summer. And as we were evaluating what we needed in 2023, uh, old pitching, you know, kind of came to, to the forefront of, of what we were looking at, which is why you see you know, some transfer pitchers in here and uh, very excited to get Adrian. A lot of confidence. Um, Coach Fitzgerald was at the Texas Junior College All-Star Game this fall and, you know, just simple text, like, we got the best guy. And, and, and that's what we think of Adrian and, and really excited about him. Robbie Snelling, left-handed pitcher from uh, McQueen High School in Reno, Nevada. Um, you know, much like Mikey, I mean, I offered this kid a scholarship when he was in eighth grade. And, um, you know, he's also a four-star football recruit, is uh, not going to be playing football at LSU. So let's squelch that right now. Uh, I want to uh, make sure that we keep him all to ourselves over here, but certainly could. Um, there's a pretty good clip of, of what caliber football player he is on running around on the internet on a hit he made the other night. So you can see why. Um, the only thing more aggressive than how he hits uh, running backs and quarterbacks is his fastball, you know, getting it up to 94 from the left side with a wipeout slider and, uh, you know, pitches with, with elite, elite competitiveness and is exactly, again, the type of person, the type of player that we want to recruit here uh, to LSU. Last and certainly not least, uh, Tucker Tillman, uh, third baseman uh, from Columbia, South Carolina. 
switch hitter, one of the best hitters, best infielders in, in the country, uh, had performed all summer against the top competition. He's obviously got a great uh, baseball background. Um, his dad, Jim Toman, uh, you know, legendary coach and recruiter at the college level at multiple stops. And, um, you know, you could see it in, in how Tuck plays that he's been around baseball his entire life and, um, you know, has unbelievable awareness. I think when I look at this list, uh, I think there's a lot of guys that could make immediate contributions. I think Tucker, you know, really jumps up to the top of that as, as well and will fit really well with a, a really good group of, of returning players that we think we're going to have, you know, following this season. So. Great day. Um, you know, like I said, a lot went into it. There's been a lot of uh, low sleep, high coffee uh, nights since the uh, end of June to get to today, and well worth it. And there's another part of this process. You know, obviously, this is a special place and a special experience. And when you talk about, you know, guys like Alex Bregman and DJ LeMayhew and Kevin Gosman, all the guys that used LSU as their development path to be you know, Major League Baseball All-Stars, you know, we want these guys to do that as well. So uh, it's a great start, you know, and now we'll get into that next phase of, of why this is important for them. So great day to be a Tiger. Yeah, hey, Coach, you mentioned the, the pitching staff. I mean, there's like, I think you said 11 or 12 pitchers. Just just what, what about, you know, locking down a, that, that number of pitchers made sense for this, this class in particular? Yeah, I think um, I'm very open-minded and, you know, really, you know, came into this thing with, okay, what is the most important thing? And when you looked at LSU's team last year, um, they played a lot of freshmen, you know, Dylan Cruz, Trey Morgan, uh, Jordan Thompson, you know, and knowing we would have some Brody, Brody, you know, we got some really good pieces that will be in their third year of college baseball in 2023 you know, then my brain starts to go like, you know what, we can develop some of the rest of this, but you can't <laughs> outcoach your own bad pitching. And what I'm excited about is there's some guys out here in fall baseball right now that are making some massive strides in their development. And Coach Kelly deserves a ton of credit for that. And the, the players, you know, working really hard. So now you start, you know, seeing some of that come together. And then you start seeing some of the names on this list how they throw their fastball, how they work down in the zone, how they have swing and miss type break and stuff, elite changeups, and put all of that together. You know, it has the makings of a, a, not a good, but a great pitching staff in, in 2023 and beyond. So uh, I think just prioritizing what's most important and, you know, winning. I mean, I'm an offensive guy, but winning starts and ends with what you have on the mound. Um, you mentioned that pitch and that, you know, the second phase is just about to start. Um, I was just curious, how much do you think NIL will be a part of that pitch? I mean, I mean, that's obviously a, a, a groundbreaking thing over the last, you know, several months. Just just how, how big do you think that'll play into getting some guys that maybe you didn't, you might not get in the past? I think it remains to be seen. However, there's no better platform for a player to create value for themselves at a college baseball program than at this place out here, you know, with leading the country in fan attendance, you know, almost every year for the past 20 or 25, I don't want to sp speak incorrectly, and the passion that the fans here have um, about LSU and about LSU baseball. And, you know, our players are guys, you know, you, you don't get attention in baseball anywhere like this program unless you are a major league player and a major league player for like the New York Yankees, you know, or the San Francisco Giants or the Los Angeles Dodgers, you know, the top market teams. So I think there's unlimited potential. You know, some of our players are tapping into that already. And I think that's really exciting. And I think that uh, guys on this list are very marketable in terms of their talent and in terms of uh, their character. And so you give them a platform like LSU baseball, I think, you know, that NIL thing becomes very real. And uh, hopefully that helps a couple of them, just gives them another reason, you know, not to bypass this. For me, there's 20 other reasons that are more important to that and their development and their growth and their readiness for professional baseball that they'll get by playing here in, in this environment. But, you know, I, I think it's very realistic to say that that, that could help us. 
Um, so number one recruiting class, your first year as head coach. And, um, but I just wonder, like, um, did you also load this class of a lot of pitchers with anticipation of some of them probably leaving in the draft? Or do you see NIL also being one of those factors that could actually entice them to stay another year of college baseball? You know, that's a good question. I, I kind of wish, um, <laughs> that's just crazy thought, but I kind of wish like it was almost like maybe the NBA where they have to declare what direction they're going, but that's not the way that it is. And what I do know is you cannot get to Omaha without elite talent. You can't, it's very difficult to get to Omaha without future major league players on your roster. It's, it's really difficult. So you have to run some risks and, um, you know, we certainly did that, but there's also some calculation in that. You know, and we mentioned getting to know the players and, and the families. There's a lot of guys on here that their family values college. And you will never convince me that this is not a better path for life development. Obviously, for academics, it's a better, but for baseball development. I mean, you know, we're we're all in with these players to help them become major league players in, in this program. And every day of my life and our coach's life is centered around how do we make our players better, which makes our team better, which for the player, that's a great thing. You know, you think about, you know, getting here in, in the summer and, and training or going out and playing summer baseball. Then you play your freshman year. Then you go to the Cape Cod League in your, your sophomore year. Then Team USA, you know, weight room. I have one of the best weight rooms in college baseball with, with Coach Roy. And so it's just like this 36-month laboratory for – improvement and then now you can go into professional baseball really ready to to succeed you know everybody wants to point to like a Mike Trout or a Corey Seager okay yeah those guys are one of a kind you know I mean they're, they're, they don't run around everywhere um, but by and large you know if you look at guys that stay in the major leagues for a long time and have sustainable careers most of those guys actually come from college baseball and programs like LSU and so I think these guys, um, they value education. I think we'll spend a lot of time over the next six months, seven months, continuing to educate them on that. And that's part of this. Um, so yeah, sometimes you have to get a few more than you need because of that. But I think uh, there's several guys on this list that, that want to be here. Like, I mean, would almost be disappointed, you know, if they didn't come here. And I, I know that might sound strange. You know, why would somebody be disappointed to, you know, have two million dollars offered to them and turn it down like some guys will do that some guys that i named on here will turn down that money and come play for us and that's that's exciting i'm also curious about the one player from canada um what goes into recruiting a player from there and like how is their system different yeah that was a uh coach kelly uh connection um, when he was at the University of Washington, I believe he started the recruitment of, of Micah there before he left to go to Arizona State. And then, so they knew each other, and then he brought it to me as, hey, he's going to reclassify, you know, do a, an additional year of high school and reopen his recruitment. And then, you know, evaluating where we were at, at least what we knew about our team, what we had in the recruiting class, draft risks, all those types of things. It, it just made sense to, to go get him. And um, he's got a great arm. And uh, Coach Kelly feels very good about his ability to contribute. So I don't know that we even really looked at the Canada thing that much, other than he was available. I mean, he was drafted by the, the Toronto Blue Jays last year. So it's clear that there's some talent there. And with all these guys, they're uber talented. And then our job will be to Put, the re put together the right development process to help them become great players here. And, and he's a guy that we think can do that. Um, I was told to ask about Gavin Guidry and just what makes him such a special player and if there's maybe a story that, you, you know, just over the last couple months that you've gotten to get to know him that really makes him stand out. Yeah, for sure. he definitely stands out. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, the, the first thing for me is just the confidence piece. And it's, it's real. And, you know, this, just the term, the, the feeling of winner that I get when I'm around him. And that, you know, comes to light on the field relative to 
he's a guy I can see bringing in, you know, in a tie game where it's first and second, one out, and feel confident we're getting out of the inning. You know, he's going to throw a couple nasty breaking balls in there, locate a fastball, strike somebody out, pop somebody up, and then come up and probably hit a single with two strikes up the middle to drive in the game-winning run. I mean, that's just the vibe that I get every time that I'm around him. Um, and uh, the other thing, too, is his um, commitment to be at LSU. I mean, it, we had a really cool day probably about a month ago. Um, he brought his dad and um, his grandpa and his uncle. It was like on a Friday at like noon and came over for an unofficial visit. We just walked around the field and how excited all of them were that he was going to be playing here. And I think there's something special to that that exists at this school and ex at this program that doesn't exist at other places. And so um, he's a, he's a big time piece of this thing going forward. And, um, his ability obviously speaks for itself, but the competitive nature of Gavin is, is what really stands out to me. Um, I'm only seeing, I think two Louisiana natives on this, uh, list and I'm just curious, like, um, you know, you seem to go all over the country for this class, uh, was that something? Is that something that's different about your class or than years past? Or, um, yeah, I was just wondering if that's a new thing for LSU baseball. The thing for LSU baseball is going to be the best players, you know, to help us get to Omaha. And I will say this, and I'll say this about the players on our team right now: I couldn't be more impressed about the in-state players here. I could not be more impressed. And when I look around. Uh, our roster and um, the players that we have from the state of Louisiana is uh, really awesome. I think in looking at that, though, um, the fact that there was so many, uh, it actually gave us some flexibility, you know, with this to, to go get what we needed. And um, so I don't know that there's a, there's a trend. If there's a really good player from Baton Rouge, you know, West Monroe, uh, New Orleans, uh, Slidell or wherever, um, and they can help us get back to the College World Series, then we're definitely going to be recruiting them. So there's no intentionality behind any of that. And I think, you know, I think you'll see a couple more guys come on board. Um, so, um, no, I don't, I don't know that I have an answer for that, really. Yeah, I just wanted after I talked to you after like the first 10 innings on Sunday and I wanted to know after coming away with um, with, I guess, you know, the exhibition win and everything. What did you see from your team that was encouraging and what is the mindset going into this weekend slate of scrimmages? What are you hoping to see? Yeah, I think uh, the encouraging parts, again, starting and ending with pitching. I think, you know, I'm walking two guys in 20 innings is that's significant. Uh, significant positive development and like I said I mentioned some positive impact you know coach Kelly has had on recruiting some of these players I think uh, he's made it a better or a bigger impact on the field you know with the pitching staff and I think the pitchers would tell you that and probably have already um, so lim the limiting of free bases from the mound and then and I think we made two errors in 20 innings. Um, I thought we handled the baseball really well. So, you know, when you're limiting opportunities for the opponent like that, it can be really hard to, to score. And I think um, it's well documented. We have some really good position players where you might be able to get through the order a time or two, but it's going to be really difficult to get through it two, three, or four times. And so if we pitch and defend at that level and then continue to improve offensively with some of the, the talent that we have, um, I think that's a good recipe for us. All right, thank you.